You're now watching and listening to Championship on the Line podcast. If you're new to this channel, my name is Alex and this is my co host Rich. And today is a very, very special episode here at Championship Online because we have a pro wrestler in the house, a luchador in the house tonight. Um, you may have seen him at Venue Wrestling Entertainment, you may have seen him at West Coast Wrestling Company, you may have seen him at East Los Lucha. Um, you also may have seen him also winning the VWE Imperial Valley championship and there he is he got the gold right there the ch- oh i love it <laughs> oh that's awesome awesome and uh you know he's bringing the rep belt repping the bwe uh imperial valley championship ladies and gentlemen we're very very excited to have him on ladies and gentlemen give it up for kid sphinx ladies and gentlemen thank y'all thank y'all for having me it's it's, it's an honor to be here Oh, no, thank you so much for being on the pod, man. We very appreciate uh, for you being here and we're very excited to have you on. And uh, before we start uh, uh, the episode, uh, we'd like to do a quick segment. We'd like to ask you t- uh, 10 fun questions. Uh, we'd like to ask 10 cool, cool questions. And uh, is that cool we do up you, sir? Yeah, yeah, of course. Awesome. Awesome. Well, take it away, Rich. All right, we'll start with question number one. What is your favorite movie of all time? Favorite movie? Uh oh, uh, I think it's called Catch Me If You Can with uh, Ooh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, that's a great movie. I, I like that. Nice. Oh, uh, the next question do you have a favorite TV show? All time? Oh, Walking Dead, hands down, for sure. Mm-hmm. Nice. I love yeah. it. The next question do you have a favorite band or uh, musical artist? Yes. Um, actually, if when, when I tell people this, like they look at me weird, but um, I only listen to Elvis Presley. Oh, oh yeah! There you go. That's what I was is, uh, dude, me and you, man. Same boat, man. <laughs> I'm a huge Elvis fan, too, man. Yeah, I love it. What's your favorite, uh, what's your favorite song or favorite album? Um, I like his version of um, My Way. I think it was oh. a Atra song, yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah. Awesome, dude. I love it. Yeah, man. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I don't know if you feel this way, but, like, I love, like, obviously Elvis is great, but I kind of like more, like, the 70s Elvis. Like, 60s, mm-hmm. like, late 60s. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And I know what you're saying. Yeah, because I tell people, like, all oh, the early stuff. I mean, don't get me wrong. Early stuff is great. But I like it when he had the suit, you know, the white suit, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. The later, the later years. But yeah, yeah man, that's awesome, man. I love it's good. I've been waiting, I'm gonna be honest, I've been waiting for this yeah. 200 episodes that we've done. You're the first person since Elvis, so thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was actually thinking of, um, like maybe like sometime in the future getting like some Elvis inspired uh, gear. Oh, that would be nice. But, yeah, that's an idea I have. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that, that, that would be that would be sick, yeah. That'd be nice. Perfect. Perfect. I don't think anyone used like any Elvis inspired gear. I, I can't think of many yeah. references. Yeah. I don't know. I I don't think it's because I don't think a lot of people just like talk about Elvis anymore. You know what I mean? Like it's it's right. not, it's not popular now, I guess. I don't know. And I gotta what ask, you were you a fan of the movie? Were you a fan of the yeah, Elvis movie that came out? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I watched it like so many times. My family gets annoyed because I, I put it like, <laughs> so many times. 
Oh yeah, dude, it's a, it's such a great movie. I think Austin Butler killed it. Like he yeah. did such a good job playing him. Like should have won an Oscar for sure, but it definitely a great movie though. Right. Well, with the next question, do you have a, a favorite uh, meal? Like your favorite go-to meal? Favorite meal? Um, I I, I really I really like pineapple pizza. Okay. Because it has a meal. Uh, it's like, well, yeah, it's, it's a meal, right? Pineapple pizza. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I will call it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it 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 um it really bothers me when people are like, oh, pineapple doesn't go on pizza. Like, it's what do you mean? Like, I I can't <laughs> go by itself. I only eat it on pizza. Well, I agree too. I think I like to, I love pineapple pizza. People kind of seem to push it aside. It's almost yeah. like the first stepchild of pizza, but I'm like, it's great to be honest. Exactly. Uh, the next question: You have a favorite uh, video game? Oh, um, no, I'm not. I'm not a very big video game person. You know, like mm-hmm. when I was young, like my brothers would play video games, and I would like watch them. But like I like now, like if I try to play a video game, I'll get bored very quickly. I know what you mean. That's kind of kind of say, share, share the same sentiment. Kind of more casual, and I'll play here and there, but not super diehard. Uh, yeah. Do you have a favorite uh, sports team? But again, I'm not I'm not a big sports person. But um, like when I when I was when I was younger, um, my family liked the, the Dallas Cowboys. Mm-hmm. So like they asked me like, "Oh, what's your favorite football team?" And I just said, "Oh, the Cowboys too," because like that's what they said. So like I don't want to switch it now because I don't want to like mm-hmm. like change my mind, but. Um, so yeah, I guess you could say like my favorite team is the Cowboys, but I, I don't really follow any sports like that except for wrestling. Mm. Nice. Nice. Well, the next question: Do you have like a favorite? Do you have like a favorite drink? Like, like a sports drink or just like any kind of beverage? Coconut water. Ooh, nice mm. for sure. I think that's the first two, right? Alex. I think yeah, coconut water. Yeah, <laughs> that, I would say yeah. That's the first one. Like uh, the next one, do you have a hobby you like to do outside of pro wrestling? Um, outside of wrestling, honestly, no. <laughs> like, uh, wrestling is like really all I do. You know, I go, I go to school. I'll come home like, and, like all day. I'm just thinking about wrestling, wrestling, and I come home and go to training. And so, not, not, not really. Uh, it's just wrestling is has like consumed my life at this point. You know. Yeah. Uh, do you have a ritual, ritual you like to do before a match? Before a match ritual? Um, no, I don't have like a specific ritual. But if if you were to go backstage in the locker room when 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 like when, before I go like before I have my match, you could find me like <laughs> pacing back and forth, pouring water on myself, doing some push ups. Um, just like so nervous, right? Just trying to like do anything, like yeah. to get be not nervous, you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, nothing specific. Just going crazy, basically. Yeah. That works. Uh, the last question, but not least, if you could have a match with someone who isn't a pro wrestler, who would it be? It could be a celebrity, it's an athlete, a fictional character. Oh, anyone who's not a pro wrestler. Um, you know who who plays Spider Man, the Tom Holland. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think I think him, but like as Spider Man, because like he could do like those like flips and stuff. And Tom, I think he's about like he might be like my height too, Tom Holland. I'm not sure, but I feel like that that would be like a pretty good match up there. Really enter- entertaining, you know. Yeah. I like. What do you think, Alex? I like it. Yeah, I love it. Uh, would it be like a singles match or would it be like an installation? Mm. No, I think just a classic one-on-one. Mm-hmm. Scene. Yeah. Just keep keep it classic, you know? There you go. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, I love, I love the answers, man. I love it. And uh, again, once again, dude, thank you so much for being on the pod. We're very happy that you're finally uh, that you're here. Um, so I want to get started, man. I want to take it back uh, the beginning of your of your wrestling journey. I want to know, like, how did you 
first get introduced to pro wrestling? Like, was it a family member? Was it a friend? Like, how did you first start watching wrestling for the first time? Um, <clears throat> you you know, there there's, I can't think of a, I can't remember a time before I liked wrestling. Mm -hmm. So like, I, I've been obsessed with wrestling since as far as I can remember. Um, I, I used to watch it like with my dad. Um, every, every week we'll go on like on YouTube and watch some old wrestling, and we I was just obsessed, right? Like I'm talking like before I went to like kindergarten because by the time I was like already going to kindergarten, I was already telling all my friends and stuff. Um, and then yeah, like it, it just it just became, you know, like people ask me like, oh, what do you want to be when you're older? I would tell them like, oh, I want to be a wrestler, and my family would look at me like, oh yeah, you know, it's it's just a phase. You'll grow out of it. And, and well, I never grew out of it. And well, now here I am, 17, and I'm a luchador. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's awesome. And, you know, watching that during that time, watching as a, as a fan, who were you like your favorite wrestlers growing up? Like, who did you like watching as a kid? Oh, OK. Um, I like, well, of course, you know, John Cena, um, Seamus, Edge. You know, I, I really like to to boo. Like, I really like to dislike Alberto Del Rio. Mm. Yeah, like he. Like, I don't know. Really, I don't know. What, I don't know why. Like, I just. I think. I think it was like the the, the cars and like the, yeah. the down and all. Just like like, I thought it was cool, but like I hated him. You know. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. No. Yeah. Wait, for sure. Oh, the next, next, I, I love. Sorry to interrupt, but I, I love no, like, the time where like um, John Cena like joined the Nexus, like was forced to join or something. Right. Like, mm -hmm. love it. No, yeah, I mean it was such a good time. I mean, especially like Alberto Rio was something different, you know. But he was like you loved him, but you hated him because he was a bad guy. But you know, he made it work and you know had a really you know really big career. And did he so like you know especially around that time it was it was very very different um but also very exciting um you know as you can see like i want to ask as you see the background rich and i we have like a lot of uh, uh a lot of action figures so i want to ask you know as a fan did you collect the action figures did you play the video games yes um not 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 really the video games but the action figures oh my god i have I'm somewhere in my closet. There's like I think like two boxes full of like action figures. Every every Christmas or birthday or any opportunity, like, I would like send the list of wrestlers that I didn't have in my family. Like which ones to get me? <laughs> yeah, I just yeah. That's every time. Like, what do you want for your birthday? Oh, wrestlers, wrestlers. <laughs> nice. I love it, man. Did you have like a like a specific like favorite figure that you loved playing with? No, I, I I try I try to treat them all like the same. Like I think it was um this doesn't make me sound a little crazy, but I watched Toy Story when I was small, and mm -hmm. I well because I watched that I was like oh like my action figures have like feelings now and I don't want to make them feel left out, so I like I would play with all of them. Oh no, dude, I get it. Yeah, especially when you have your like I would always have like a roster, so I'm like okay, he's gotta be he's gotta be in the match, he's gotta be in the match. Yeah. Like, gotta put them in the yeah. cart, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, I know exactly what you're doing. I think Alex and I kind of have the same idea. Like, you're making a roster or a card, and you feel like, oh man, I'm leaving him out. I'm like, it's just a toy. But to me, I'm like, no, I feel bad for the guy. <laughs> like, you get in that promoter's headspace. That hooker's. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> But uh, yeah, you know, like um, you know, telling you know from your being a fan and watching wrestling and being a fan, like take me back, like when did the moment happen when you decided to take the next steps of becoming a uh, wrestler? Like when did that happen? Like oh, going to wrestling school. Like when did those steps start to happen for you? Yeah. So like like I said, I I you know my whole life, right? I want to be a wrestler. I want to be a wrestler. Um, and people kind of like my family, my friends, they kind of like, uh, you know, they didn't really understand it. Um, and so I went into karate when I was Ooh. nine. Oh, wow. 
and I did karate and stuff and and the plan was always right like oh after after high school when I'm 18 19 years old I'm gonna go and train somewhere I don't know where right I'm like I didn't have an idea I did not really research anything I was just like I'm, I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it somehow um, but then I got into karate and I was doing that by the time I was 11 um, I was a I'm not sure what belt I was but I was you know, a couple months off from doing like my test do, to to get my black belt. So mm -hmm. I was like a couple months off, but then like my sister showed me a flyer and it's, it was like um, a wrestling school here, like in the Imperial Valley. Right. And I was like, what, what, what do you mean? Like here in the Imperial Valley is a wrestling school. So like there's where like, I, I made my mom call like the number, like you need to call, you need to call like three, four times. And the guy didn't answer, didn't answer, didn't answer. Eventually he answered and I stopped karate like that that same day and went to go went to go try wrestling. So like I left karate, you know, just a couple months off to get my black belt. I, I left it that day to go and and go to um wrestling school. And I got there and 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 well, yeah, the rest is history, you know. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say, how did your like senseis and like your coaches react to the news? <laughs> well, I, I just started telling them like, all right, I gotta go. Like uh, like not not that. <laughs> It's not like I, I rushed out the door, but it was like, yeah. um, it was like, okay, yeah, like I'm not going to come back next week. And it's like, why not? Well, I'm going to go be a wrestler. And they're like, what? Like, what, do you, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, I had been there, actually, this happened when I was 13. So I was there from 9 to 13, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, four, what, four years? Yeah. Like, like, and they just like, okay, I'm not going to come back anymore. I was like, why not? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. And uh, that's crazy. So, like, after that, like, going to wrestling school, like, tell me about it, man. What was it like going first day to wrestling school, like, taking your first bumps? Like, what was that uh, whole moment like for you? So, I showed up. Um, I showed up because they they called my mom, right? They said, oh, yeah, just, just um, you know, take them there and have them watch the class and see how it is, right? Like, how, if you really want to do it. So I showed up in like jeans and an AJ style shirt, um, like not 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 dressed at all, right? Like appropriate. I I got there and like they they made us sign like some waiver. And then they're like, okay, um, well, you know, get on the mat and start doing front rolls. And I was like, what? I'm I'm in jeans, but okay. So the first day, everyone else was in the ring, and I was just they just put me on the mat and told me to keep doing like front rolls. And by the first day, I had done my front rows and my back rows I had gotten down pretty good so and they were like kind of like kind of shocked because like it takes some people like a, a while to get the the front rows down and like tuck their neck and do the back rows but I think because I did karate um it it, it came a little like it, it kind of clicked for me a little faster so my first day I was like doing front rows back rows and they're like oh okay um yeah just you know get wrestling shoes and come back next week and i'll say okay so then i just started from there oh nice nice and especially you know like when you hear stories you know for other wrestlers usually you know they do wrestling like after you know after high school like after college but you started at such a young age what was it kind of like being you know surrounded with like other adult other adults in the class like what was that feeling like for you um it I guess I I, I I was 13, right, when I started. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone, I now looking back, I feel like people looked at me like, oh, just just a kid, like, he's going to get hurt. He's not, he just, just, you know, he's just a kid. But I feel like I kind of, as just a kid, I was doing, like, I, I moved on pretty quickly. And, you know, in a couple months, I was on the level that these adults were on. And I think that kind of gave me some, like, I guess you could say, like, respect um, with my peers. And, yeah, it it it, it was, um, it became a little challenging as I started to wrestle. And, and, you know, I was 14 when I did my first match. And that was my, uh, I was a freshman in high school. And so it, it, it became kind of, like, difficult trying to balance like wrestling in school and mm -hmm. i mean even now it's kind of like like i said wrestling can like consume my life so like i'm I'm like right. thinking about it at school too i'm like thinking about wrestling but 
it's just it's it's I don't know. I have like mixed mixed feelings about starting young. I feel like it's good that I started young because like I would have experience now. Now I'm 17 and I would have a few years under my belt. But I wish I would have started a little later because mm-hmm. it would have been able to really like be a kid, like really enjoy like those teenage years, right? Mm-hmm. Instead of having to like go to wrestling shows and 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 do shows and stuff. Like I love all that, but like people at school because you know I have a mask, so people at school don't know who I am. They don't know my my like that I'm a wrestler. Mm-hmm. So they'll ask me like you know. Um, oh, are, are you going to this football game? And I'll be like, no, I can't. Why not? Well, it's because I had to do something. But in reality, it's because, you know, I had to go wrestle and, you know, put my Super Valley Championship on the line or something like that. So it, it's, it's, it's kind of difficult uh, to balance, but it, it's, it's been pretty fun. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, I mean, like, you know, I think it's such a good thing and it's such positive because you have such a, like, such a head start from everyone else you know and i feel like just watching your videos and watching matches you're doing things that's so incredible to watch and like it takes like years for a lot of people to do that but the fact that you're doing it at such a young age and you know like i like i can't wait like when you turn like 25 or 30 like it's because all the moves that you're doing right now and the, the matches you're putting on is is incredible and it's it's awesome to watch and uh you know especially you know, doing those matches, and then also too, like it's so crazy because like you're in high school, like I can't. It's I could just imagine like, oh yeah, you're going to like class, and like, oh no, I got a match, I got to defend my title. Like I think that's so cool. You know, like I wish I would have <laughs> put like fantasy, like the women cool to like do that. But the fact that uh you're doing that is so uh that's awesome, man. And I I applaud you for for doing that and going to school and becoming a wrestler after that and and doing these matches. Um, Thank you. But I wanted to ask. Uh, you know, um, you know, learning from your coaches, what was the one thing that like you took from them that you kind of still keep to this day, you know, any advice or anything that you learned from wrestling school that you still uh, hold on today? Um, uh, I would say it's, you know, I was doing um, uh, a training with um, Knox Pro. It's mm. a company ran by like Rikishi and Black yeah. Pearl. And so here, I'll, I'll go a little off track and tell you the backstory. So mm. I had just um put up like put up the ring for their show. And and I had just ate like I don't know what I ate, like Burger King or something. It was something like I wasn't expecting to be wrestling at all. And so then all right, like the the, the ring's done. Now, you know, the show's gonna start in a couple hours. And they're just like, oh hey, you um get in the ring and, and show me what he can do, said Black Pearl. And I'm like, oh, I'm all nervous, right? Because I have like, I just ate. i am like been working on the ring all day. I'm not like dressed. I, have, I don't have my wrestling shoes, but whatever. I, I get in the ring and I just start doing stuff and working with, with, these, with these people, showing them what I can do, right? And, and um, Black Pearl looked at me and he said that everything I'm doing is look, look, looked great or whatever, but he wanted me to focus more on my like um, longevity, mm-hmm. like making sure that, especially, you know, starting really young, like making sure that I can still do this when I'm 30 years old, 40 years old. You know what I mean? Like, cause he said that these big companies, they're, they're not going to look in, they're not going to sign you because you're doing like cool backflips and stuff. Cause now everyone's doing that. They're going to sign mm-hmm. you a, if you are, if they can keep you for a while, right? If you can wrestle for them for a long time. So that, I think that's, that I really stuck out to me, like, you know, really protecting my body and trying mm-hmm. to preserve it until I'm, until I'm like older, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And especially, you know, I like, can it's true what you say, because now like, you know, I know Richard uh, tells me this a lot, like, especially now in today's rest, there's so much high spot at the high spot at the high spot, you know, and I think it's, like you said, it's good to save some things and it doesn't always have to be flip after flip, you know what I mean? And it's just, you know, the way you're doing it, you know, just taking your time, work the spot, and then, you know, which I think is such a best way to do it. And, uh, you know, and especially the, what you're doing right now, like, I want to take me back to the time where, you know, the decision to, to become a master wrestler? Like, when did that decision happen for you? 
to be a mass wrestler? Um, so it's 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 a weird story because I you know growing up I didn't I didn't really look into lucha libre. Mm-hmm. I like Edge, John Cena, Del Rio, which like I guess he's like you know lucha libre, but he's like he didn't wear a mask, right? He, mm-hmm. you know, um, I I didn't I didn't really. How do I say this? Like, I didn't really like Rey Mysterio was never my favorite wrestler. Cena was never my favorite wrestler. I, I don't know why. It's just I never really like mass never caught my attention, right? Mm-hmm. But then I started training and and um you know the the, the promoter or uh, the, the owner of the of the company said that it's best if I start off with the mask. So if I make any mistakes. It's it's okay because I'm wearing a mask, right? It's not like you guys can like see who I am or whatever. Mm-hmm. And like at the end of the day, I could take the mask off and I'm and I'm free to be. I'm free to go to the store and the mistake that I made in the ring does not count. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so I kind of was given the mask, but then I started putting it on and I kind of like it now. I think it it just kind of it, it suits my style better, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially yeah, man. Especially watching matches and the stuff you can do, man. It's uh... You're a luchador, man. I think you wear the mask proud, and uh, it's 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 awesome to see uh, the things you do in the ring, man. And uh, you know, take me back. You know, what did it feel like? You know, like going from training and then finally having your first match. Like, when did that? Uh, what was that moment like for you, coming out of the curtains? You know, wrestling in front of a, a crowd. Yeah. So, um, before I made my first professional match, like before I made my debut. Mm-hmm. I wrestled um like student exhibitions, like like training mm-hmm. match in front of a crowd. So like like oh, dark, okay. you know. And I wrestled there and I remember like, you know, I started training in October and my first student exhibition was in January. So like just a couple months. And I I don't think I was like I knew exactly what I was doing. I definitely did not know what I was doing. But I, I went I, you know, so nervous, went out and, you know, when you go out there, your, your nerves kind of like calm down. But yeah, those student exhibition matches, I did not know what I was doing. And they were just for me to kind of get familiar with being in the ring with the crowd. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, But then if you're talking about like my actual like debut match happened in Yuma, Arizona, it was um, November 14th, 2020. So it wasn't the pandemic. So we were doing these shows where there were like drive-in style. So like people would like, mm. they're, like kind of park far away and like watch the wrestling. Like the ring was like, I don't know. It was weird. Cause like they were very far. So mm-hmm. of course I, you know, very nervous. I went out there and I stayed nervous because there was no crowd. There was no like adrenaline. It was just like, you know, someone over there might honk their horn a few times and that's it. <laughs> it, it. It was very, it was such a, like it felt like uh like a dream like i don't know it just feels so weird like cars far away and like so definitely the first couple matches were like that and i was so nervous for them and no crowd being there like directly like around the ring really like didn't help my nerves at all Mm -hmm. and especially you know and i gotta ask like how old were you when you made your professional debut um i was 14 Wow. Oh, that's awesome, man. That's so crazy, man. That's so cool. That, like 14 making a debut in wrestling and, you know, putting these matches. And uh, I wanted to ask, you know, you've wrestled some of uh, some of our past uh, guests. Uh, I know you worked with like Wicked, oh, Wicked, Wicked, uh, Honest John. You know, you get, you had matches. What was it like working with uh, with those two guys? Oh, it, it was great. I'll tell you, like, in the ring, Wicked Wicked is very, very fast. Like, I came in with a clothesline. I didn't see it coming. Like, he just, like, the way he moves, it's just, it's incredible. Honest John, great. He he knows exactly what he's doing in the ring. He's such a, um, I consider him, like, a veteran. Um, mm-hmm. And he definitely, like, it It helped me a lot to work, to work with him. Mm-hmm. Was there anything that you, sh- uh, any advice they given you, anything that you, you learned from that match that, it helped you along the way? Um, 
I can't remember anything they might have told me, but like specifically, but um, I do know that like uh, like I I just needed to in that match because that that was the match I I won the Imperial Valley Championship right it was a fatal four way mm -hmm. I know that um. I needed to like slow myself. I think I was excited to win, like, like to like to be in 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 a match for the championship and have the opportunity to win the championship, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think I was excited, and I think I just like needed to like calm down a bit, really soak the moment in. You know what I mean? Um, like appreciate it, you know, instead of just going out there and like focusing on wrestling, right? Mm -hmm. And then I want to ask you know, since you are the VW Imperial Valley uh, champion. What does that belt, uh, you know, what does that belt mean to you, man? How does it mean for for you and your career to to hold that prestigious uh, championship belt? Um, this belt means a lot to me. It's it's my first my first um championship that I won, and you know, being the Imperial Valley championship, like you know, growing up in the Imperial Valley, like you don't you don't hear that. You don't hear uh, the valley is such like a small little like community you don't really hear there being an imperial valley championship for lucha libre like i mean you would have told me that when i was eight <laughs> years old like i would have thought you were crazy like that's wild but being the first imperial valley lucha libre champion is wow like so far like the the greatest accomplishment in my career for sure uh, yeah it, it really means a lot to me i try to take care of it as much as i can mm-hmm and especially, you know, as a as a young champion, you know, um, I'm, I'm sure you have a lot of people that want uh, that that belt, you know, want to want to crack at that championship. You know, was, is there any message for the future uh, opponents out there that that want to uh, face you for that belt? Well, um, you know, I, I I I'm not gonna step down from any challenge. You know, if anyone wants a match with uh, a shot at the championship, go ahead. You know what I mean? Like I. I'll do an open challenge or call me out, whatever you want. Like I I'm down to put this championship on the line against whoever. Um I, I believe that if if you if you beat me, then you truly deserve to call yourself champion, right? Like I'm I'm not gonna like try to like play it down or like oh he cheated or whatever. No, like you or you won fair and square, all right, new champion. You know, I'm not gonna like um claim anything. Uh I think the right the rightful person should hold the championship. Mm -hmm. oh, I love it, man. And uh, as a fighting champion, you know, you know, uh, seeing uh, matches again, like uh, you know, one thing I was watching, I was watching your uh, YouTube channel. One match I saw, and I loved uh, very much, was uh, you against uh, El Rey, another uh, fellow luchador. And uh, what was it like uh, getting uh, going in the ring with him? Oh, I'll tell you, he it it, it hurt. <laughs> <laughs> um. I, it was my first time at East Los Lucha, and it was um maybe I wasn't like used to like I don't know I, I don't know, but I just remember everything hurting. Like I would hit that mat, and I was oh my god, I chipped my tooth in that match. Oh. Um, it, it yeah, that it hurt. But Ray is is, is a great wrestler. I I really want to be in the ring with him again. Sure. Oh yeah, man, watch that match. Yeah, because I've I've seen him wrestle live, and man, dude, he's a he's a very tough opponent, man. And the fact that uh. You went around him for a long time, and it was cool. It was amazing to watch, man. Really cool, cool match to see, and uh, you know, especially with now uh, with your career, man. What are your What are your goals, man? What's the the long goals for you, man? Where would you like to to go in the future? Any you know ideal companies you like to sign with? I have a lot of goals. I I'm in here, you know, to make this my like job my career like i want to make a living off of wrestling um i wouldn't be doing it if i was just doing it just like to for fun mm -hmm. you know i'm serious about this i you know so many goals but i and i won't list all of them but like i i, I want to travel the world right i want to wrestle japan germany italy france you know canada mexico brazil everywhere like everywhere in the world all continents antarctica too like let's do our first wrestling show there um <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh i any companies i want to i want to wrestle for all the companies right like you know aw ring of honor impact all, all of them but since i was really young my dream's always been to main event wrestlemania 
So if I get can get signed to WWE and I if I can main event WrestleMania, you know that's the, the ultimate dream come true. And I, I I think I think I can do it. I think if I work hard enough, I my mind to it. I I should I should get there. No, absolutely, man. Definitely agree. And uh, and uh, especially you know the things you're doing, man, at such a young age and the, the stuff uh, the matches you're putting on. I think eventually, you know, I think uh, you know I see a bright future for you, man. And I can't wait to see uh what's next for you and uh and the you know it's talking about the companies you know what about the wrestlers man is there a list for you of uh, guys you'd like to be in a ring with in the future oh yeah i um some rematches i want like i, I wrestled jake painter mm. uh, and it was a great match i wrestled him twice one in a triple threat uh, i want to have another one-on-one -on -one match with him i want to have another one-on-one -on -one match with vito fatale Another mm -hmm. one with Chris Nasty. I want to mm -hmm. wrestle um, Bodhi, Bodhi Young Prodigy, right? Because like I think it'll be cool, like because he's young too. So mm -hmm. I think kid versus kid thing. I I think that that that'll be pretty cool. Um, there there's a lot of names out there I can give you, like a one on one with Wicked, a one on one with Honest John. Um, so so many names there, great names. Oh yeah, man, definitely, man. I can see all those matches being bangers, man. I, you know, hopefully those matches, uh, fingers crossed, man, happen very soon because I think uh, it would be very, very exciting to watch. And uh, you know, before uh, you wrap up, you know, you know, is there any advice uh, you would give to someone watching this and they want to become a pro wrestler, man? Is there any advice you like to uh, give to someone that wants to uh, make a career in the ring? Yeah, definitely. So, um, I would say if you want to be a wrestler, mm -hmm. if you truly like if this is truly your passion then go for it right nothing's gonna stop you and nothing's gonna stop you from achieving what you want to achieve um it, it don't 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 i would say don't do it if you're going to like just do it for the for fun right i'm, I'm sorry can can y'all hear like the dogs <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. Fine. Yeah, good. yeah all right cool yeah. um but uh yeah i was saying like don't like I've heard someone someone come up to me and they said that they're training to be a wrestler to to lose weight. They said, mm -hmm. and they 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 didn't last you know more than a week there. But like mm -hmm. stuff like that, like I trying to become a wrestler just to like to lose weight is crazy to me. Um, like if you want to lose weight, I would say go on a diet, but like not go to <laughs> wrestling school, right? Um, yeah. Crazy. They didn't last more than a week, but. That, that would be my thing. Like, if you're going to do it, really commit to do it. Have a reason and nothing's going to stop you. Nothing, no one, nothing, not what they say, not what they think. It's what you want, you know? Absolutely, man. Dude. Definitely agree. And definitely great advice. And, uh, you know, again, uh, before we wrap up, you know, if someone that's watching this right now and may have never seen you wrestle, but they, but they will in the future, what can you Tell the fans what they can expect to see Kid Sphinx in the ring. What can they expect to see? Well, they can they can expect to see the future <laughs> as Jesus. Yeah. That's like, you know, I they they can get a glimpse of what the future of this sport looks like. I am out there and I give it all that I got, and I am going to just keep getting better. So I hope you know you can you guys can catch me in the ring in person one time for awesome sure. man definitely definitely and again dude once again thank you so much for being on the podcast man we really appreciate uh you being here and uh before we wrap up is there anything you have anything coming up uh, any bookings like to promote uh any social media to let the fans know yeah so upcoming um next week next saturday december 23rd in heber california i'm wrestling Probably the biggest match of my career so far. I have it's gonna be myself versus Little Cholo one on one. Ooh. Uh, be his in his um SoCal Championship versus my mask. So oh. if, if I win, right, I'll be celebrating Christmas. Yeah, Imperial Valley Championship and the SoCal Championship right here. But if if I lose, then. I'll be celebrating Christmas without my mask. So no. <laughs> we'll see how we'll see how that happens. I've been training um, really hard for this match. One-on-one -on -one with Little Cholo. Um, like I said, biggest match of my career so far. 
uh, that's that's the only match I have upcoming right now. But any social media, um, I'm on TikTok, kid.sphinx, uh, YouTube, Kid Sphinx, and on Instagram, kid underscore sphinx. Awesome, awesome. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll put uh, all that in the description down below where you can find all his social media. And uh, definitely, definitely, you should definitely go and follow this young man's journey because it's definitely going to be a good one. And I, again, man, I can't wait for the future for you, man. I see a lot of good things happening for you. And uh, again, man, thank you so much for being on the pod. And uh, yeah, man, thank you so much. And uh, hopefully uh, everyone watching, go ahead again, <laughs> subscribe, like, comment. And uh, follow this man's uh, journey and uh, all social media. And again, thank you so much for watching Champ Joe Online. We'll see you guys next time. Hey, what's up, guys? I hope you guys enjoyed the interview with Kid Sphinx. It was an exciting interview. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's that time for our musical performance from the Viper and the Tech Cans. Enjoy. Kids, let's it's pretty little thing over here. Congrats. We got something for you guys. You guys get up before time for Rex. You got to do something here. Oh, man.